please. We're going to have to um, bring a discontinuance to the viewing the remains in about another minute or two we will have to begin to move forward you have about one or two minutes if you want to come up we wish up all softly there are some names I want to call to be sure they are here if you are here and I call your name please let me know you are Pastor Ronald Alexander Pastor Booker Dupree Pastor Judy Hines Bishop E.J. Lilliard Pastor David Williams Let's take a minute now and give God glory and praise. Give him glory and praise. It's not going to be easy trying to honor someone who is physically gone, but very spiritually alive. I keep saying to myself, he's gone. But if I cut the TV on, I hear him there. If I cut on YouTube, I see him there. Every time I look at any of our media, I see and feel his presence. So we're going to do our best to honor this wonderful gift that God has given us. Let's begin this with a prayer of thanksgiving, God. Praise of thanksgiving. Come on, give him a praise of thanksgiving. Give God a praise. The family has invited one of the most prominent and upcoming singing groups we have today. A musical group are a group of prophets who bring a message by way of song are truly some of God's wonderful prophets. I'm going to ask you to praise God. Put your hands together. I'm going to ask all of the walking to come to a close and put your hands together and let's give them a wonderful praise God as they come the Shelby Five No. 
mind where you are let's just continue to worship God let's bless him
the uh, Shelby Five, don't go too far. Just stay close. It is now our time to receive the leaders of the Church of God in Christ. I'm going to ask everyone to stand. They're led by the second assistant presiding bishop, the Bishop Cedric Daniel, one of God's greatest leaders. The call to worship would be by Administrative Assistant Ronald Alexander. The
Come on, put your hands together and give the Lord praise. Come on, that was a patty clap. Give the Lord praise. Clap your hands like you know Jesus. Clap your hands like you know the Lord. Well, one more time, clap your hands like you're on your way to heaven. Repeat after me. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that hath made us, and not we ourselves. We are his people, and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving, and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him. Come on, Zion, and let's bless his name with our hands. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endureth to all generations. I was instructed by Mother Allen and that family to hit one of those Pentecostal sanctified heaven-bound songs. Cousin Rudy, are you there? Give me C sharp, please. The glory for the things that he has done. We're getting ready to pray. We only have a few moments. Let's go before the great throne of grace and I need every believer through your tears through your sadness this ain't no do-over we only got right now to praise God and celebrate the man of God touch your neighbor and say neighbor this ain't no do-over tell your neighbor you are privileged to be at this celebration tell your neighbor say neighbor Anytime there's a celebration, you got to make some noise. Hey, said, anytime there's a celebration, some noise got to be made. So I'm going to try to pray, but while I'm praying, I need some noise makers. I need somebody that don't mind giving God praise. Because my bishop, my friend, my father was an excellent praiser. So we need to celebrate today and give God some praise. If you didn't want to praise him, you shouldn't have came. But while you're here, I need you to make some noise. I'm going to try to pray without getting too excited. But I need somebody to begin to clap your hands. I need everybody that can to stand up on your feet. I'm going to be done in a few minutes. As I begin to pray, I need you to make some noise. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we honor you today, thanking you for your goodness and your mercy. Lord, we have gathered here today to celebrate your servant, Bishop Rance Lee Allen, your servant whom you chose to transition from earth to glory a few days ago but Lord we're praying for Bishop Allen's wife Evangelist E.M. Allen Lord strengthen her y'all better help me Lord comfort her Lord let her feel your presence like never before in the name of Jesus Lord we're praying for the Allen family we're praying for the Mendez family. Lord, we pray that you would comfort them. Lord, we're praying for New Bethel Church. And we're praying for Michigan Northwest Harvest Jurisdiction. Strengthen us, Lord. Somebody says, strengthen us, Lord. Come on, somebody. I need a church. I need a church. Strengthen us, Lord. The Bible declares, blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Lord, I thank you for comforting your people. As I'm praying today, God, I need everybody in here 
I'm going to ask God in the name of Jesus to comfort you right now. I bind up the spirit of heaviness and I loose the spirit of praise. Jesus said, Verily I say unto you, He said, Whatsoever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatsoever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. So I bind the spirit of heaviness and I loose the spirit of praise today. So we are praising God for the life of Bishop Rance Lee Allen for he was a praiser when he came into the room he could sing praises to you when he preached your word cause praises to you God Bishop Allen didn't care who was watching him when he praised you God for he knew when the praises go up that blessings would come down Lord we praise you today Send down your blessings upon your people. For I believe that Bishop Allen is laying the hands of the Lord right now. And I believe that he's looking down on us. And he wants us to praise him right now. I need everybody that knows that Bishop Allen is a praiser. Come on and begin to praise the Lord. I'm getting ready to go to my seat. Romans 8 and 28. Bishop Allen's favorite scripture. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are called according to his purpose. Lord, we thank you. Somebody tell God thank you. We thank you for the privilege of knowing Bishop Ransom. He touched lives all over the world. Lord, you said, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify my Father which is in heaven. Bishop Allen, we thank you for being a light, a bright light in a dark world. Bishop Allen, we thank you for doing the will of God. We'll miss you, Bishop Allen, but you'll never be forgotten. For the Bible says to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Lord, we thank you for this man of God. We had the privilege of spending time with him. God, we celebrate him today by giving you praise. So I need everybody as I go to my seat, clap your hands, open your mouth, and give God some praise. I said give God some praise. Give God some praise. Come on and praise him. Let everything that has brought praise the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. Clap those hands for Jesus. I want to say to the Allen family, I love you. To my sister Ellen, I love you dearly. To the children, I love you. I appreciate the life and the time I've had to spend with the bishop. And I thank God for the transition, the celebration. And so with that being said, our scripture Ecclesiastes chapter 3 verses 1 through 11 and it reads there is a time for everything and a season for every activity under the heavens a time to be born and a time to die a time to plant and a time to uproot a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to tear down, and a time to build, a time to weep, and a time to laugh, a time to mourn, and a time to dance, a time to scatter stones, and a time to gather them, a time to embrace, and a time to refrain from embracing, 
A time to search and a time to give up. A time to keep and a time to throw away. A time to fear and a time to mend. A time to be silent and a time to speak. A time to love and a time to hate. A time for war and a time for peace. What do workers gain from their toil? I have seen the burden God has laid on the human race. He has made everything beautiful in its time. He has also set eternity in the human heart, yet no one can fathom what God has done from beginning to end. May God bless the reading of his word. Amen. I take this time to uh, welcome the Church of God in Christ national representatives, bless you Bishop Daniels, and to the state representatives, local officials as well. We send our condolences out to my friend, Evangelist Ellen Allen, the Allen family, and to New Bethel, and to all of the churches represented under the leadership of my friend, Bishop Rance Lee Allen. All of those who know Bishop, uh, knew Bishop Allen, knew that he had this favorite scripture out of Romans 8, 28. It's even on the wall there at the church. And uh, we want to try to put some empathy on it again today for we know that all things and everybody help me say all things all things work together for good to them who love God and to the called according to his purpose even this situation here we have today we believe that it's working together for our good. So we want to take solace in that and comfort to know that regardless of what situation you have today, once again, all things, let's reach around and tell somebody, all things work together for good to them who love God and to the called according to his purpose. May this find comfort and bring comfort to your souls. God bless you. That's who that was. All right, let me make sure I understand my program. We're supposed to have a welcome from the Cornerstone Church. I'm assuming that's what we just had. He didn't do his job. All right, I, I apologize. Um, Thank you. This is the Cornerstone Church. All right, let's give them a hand as they come.
What a morning we are having here today. I just want to read out of Philippians. It says, yes, and I will continue to rejoice. For I know that through your prayers and the help given by the Spirit of Jesus Christ, what has happened to me will turn out for my deliverance. I eagerly expect and hope that I will in no way be ashamed, but will have sufficient courage so that now, as always, Christ will be exalted in my body, whether by life or death. For to me, to live is Christ and to die is is gain. We are here today celebrating and remembering the life of a man who lived in light of who Christ is and who now is living in the eternal gain of the presence of our God and our Savior. What a day it is today. Amen. Good morning. As the pastors here at Cornerstone Church, we just wanted to, along with our founding pastors, Bishop Michael and Pastor Kathy Pitts, and our extended Cornerstone Church family, we wanted to officially welcome everybody to our sanctuary here at Cornerstone Church. The clergy, the bishops that are here, officials, everybody that is in the room, as well as those that are unable to be here physically and are joining us online right now, we wanted to say welcome. And we are so glad to have you here at Cornerstone Church, like my wife Meredith said, to honor and to celebrate the life of a legend here locally, nationally, and globally, Bishop Rance Allen. Welcome to Cornerstone Church. Affirmation of faith, will you please stand with me? We will say it together. Thank you, precious hearts, for laboring to your feet for the statement, affirmation of faith. Let us begin. We believe the Bible to be the inspired and only infallible written word of God. We believe that there is only one God, eternally existed in three persons, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. We believe in the blessed hope, which is in the rapture of the church of God, which is in Christ at his return. We believe that the only means of being cleansed from our sins is through repentance and faith in the precious blood of Jesus Christ. We believe that regeneration is essential for the personal salvation. We believe the redemptive work of Christ on the cross provides healing for the human body and answer to believing prayer. We believe that the baptism of the Holy Spirit, according to Acts 2 and 4, is given to believers who ask for it. We believe in the sanctifying power of the Holy Spirit by whose indwelling the Christian is able to live a holy and separate life in this present world. Thank you. Bishop, to know we were we were dancing <laughs> in the Church of God in Christ. We kind of just move our foot and our head. Sister Allen, I think you had something to do with this program. <laughs> that was wonderful. Let's give God the praise. <laughs> the reading of resolutions is Sister Retha Bryant. Also, we want to acknowledge the presence of the mayor of Toledo. He is present here today. I'm not sure where he is, but uh, let's just praise God for him. All right, Sister Bryant, you may come. Resolution of respect for Bishop Rance Lee Allen. 
We, the Bountiful Blessings Incorporated family, bow our heads in humble submission to God's will as we celebrate the legacy of our friend and brother, Bishop Rance Lee Allen. Whereas Bountiful Blessings Ministries respectfully acknowledge the relationship Bishop Rance Allen shared with his mentor, the late Bishop Gilbert Earl Patterson and Evangelist Louise Patterson, and whereas Bishop, then Apostle G.E. Patterson, installed Elder Rance Lee Allen and Lady Ellen Marie Allen as overseers of the New Bethel Church of God in Christ, now New Bethel Bountiful Blessings Church of God in Christ in Toledo, Ohio where Bishop Allen pastored faithfully until his passing. And whereas during the 1980s, Bishop Allen began to focus on evangelism, and aside from pastoring, he engaged in traveling and evangelizing alongside Bishop G.E. Patterson. And whereas Bishop Allen's signature music ministry will remain a lasting impact that will influence a generation of gospel and circular artists to numerous to count. Therefore, be it resolved that Though it is evident that Bishop Allen's transition is deeply mourned and his absence is strongly felt, his life and legacy as an evangelical and community leader, dynamic pastor, musical icon cannot be ignored or denied. Be it finally resolved that our thoughts and prayers are with Lady Allen and the entire Allen family. May God's peace and outpouring of support extended to the family serve as a reminder of how much Bishop Allen is loved and appreciated. Humbly submitted this 14th day of November, Evangelist Louise D. Patterson, President, Bountiful Blessings Incorporated. Jurisdictional Pastors and Elders Council, Church of God in Christ Incorporated, Judicial Headquarters at 3615 Bishop Ted D. Thomas Senior Way, Portsmouth, Virginia. Servant of God, well done. Life on earth, well done. Entering the joy begun, battle is over, victory is won. Whereas we celebrate the pleasure of our Heavenly Father to translate from labor of this life to enter the church triumphant, the most Reverend Bishop Rance Lee Allen, Prelay, Michigan, Northwest Harvest Ecclesiastical Jurisdiction Church of God in Christ, Whereas Chairman Christopher B. Thomas, the elected officers, executive committee members, and the pastors and elders, Council Church of God in Christ, of the historic Virginia First Ecclesiastical Jurisdiction constituent statewide commemorates New Bethel Church of God in Christ of Toledo, Ohio. Whereas Bishop Ransley Allen was the pastor of the New Bethel Church of God in Christ, from 1985 to present, and prelay of the Michigan Northwest Harvest Ecclesiastical Jurisdiction from 2011 to 2020. Whereas Bishop Rance Lee Allen was a world-renowned gospel singer and preacher having formed the Rance Allen Group with the brothers Tom and Steve in 1969 and establishing his own record label. Rance Allen was known worldwide for the vast vocal range, powerful vocalist, and his anointed gospel preaching. His contributions to the year of gospel music are legendary. Whereas Bishop Rance Lee Allen has been married to his lovely wife, Mother Ellen Allen, for 49 years. Whereas we further extend to the family our prayers and that they would look to the hills for the God of all mercies and the Father of all comfort. We know surely that the Allen family, the state of Michigan, Ohio, the gospel music industry, and the Church of God in Christ at large will long feel the vast emptiness of the absence of the most Reverend Bishop Rance Lee Allen. Be it therefore resolved, we bow our hearts in humble submission to him who is able to keep you above all you can ask or think, and that we extend our love and respect to this celebrated family, churches, and community. Resolve further that a copy of this resolution be placed in the official archives of the Pastors and Elders Council, Church of God in Christ, of the Michigan Northwest Harvest Ecclesiastical Jurisdiction, and a copy presented to the family of Bishop Rance Lee Allen, respectfully submitted, officers and members of, of Pastors and Elders Councils, Church of God in Christ, of the historic Virginia First Ecclesiastical Jurisdiction, Overseer Christopher B. Thomas, Chairman, Elder Dama Donald A. Sewell, Senior Vice Chairman, Pastor Edward J. Wood is Secretary, and Pastor Lavelle Ford is the Treasurer. 
The International Department of Women, Church of God in Christ, Incorporated, Mother Barbara McCoo Lewis, General Supervisor, Mother Millie, Way, Millie May Rivers, General Supervisor, and Bishop Charles E. Blake, Senior, Senior Presiding Bishop and Chief Apostle. The resolution. In my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would not have told you. I go to prepare a place for you, John 14 and 2, where it has pleased our Heavenly Father to transfer from the labors of this life to the sweet rest and fellowship of the saints in heaven. We, the International Department of Women, do pen this resolution to pay tribute to Bishop Rance Lee Allen Prelay of the Michigan Northwest Harvest Ecclesiastical Jurisdiction, and whereas our hearts were saddened to hear that Bishop Allen had taken a journey home to be with the Lord, we sorrow not, even as others which have no hope, because the earthly transition for a saint of God is a promotion. And whereas Bishop Rance Allen was ordained in 1978 and then became the associate pastor of the Holiness Temple Church of God in Christ in Monroe, Michigan for over six years. And then in 1985, the late Bishop Gilbert Patterson founded New Bethel Church in Toledo, Ohio and installed Bishop Allen there as a pastor where he currently served until present. He was consecrated prelay of Michigan Northwest Harvest Jurisdiction in 2011 and in 1995 and in recognition of his dedicated years in ministry, the Urban Bible Institute of Detroit bestowed upon him an honorary Doctorate of Divinity, whereas Bishop Allen was married to evangelist Ellen Marie Groves since December of 1970. The calling on her life has been an enormous blessing to Bishop Allen as she has helped him take his ministry to a greater level. God blessed him to share that love and support to many Godchildren. Office of the General Supervisor, 5819 Bedford Avenue in Los Angeles, California. Prayerfully submitted, Mother Barbara McCoo Lewis, General Supervisor. Wisconsin First Jurisdiction, Church of God in Christ, 3500 West Mother Daniels Way in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. The resolution. Wisconsin's First Jurisdiction, Church of God in Christ, embraces you in prayer and love and the loss of your loved one. Bishop Rance Allen, there remaineth therefore a rest to the people of God. For he that is entered into his rest, he also hath ceased from his own works, as God did for his. Hebrews 4, 9 through 10. Whereas death has removed from our midst a long time laborer in the Lord's vineyard. Bishop Rance Allen, the constituent of the Wisconsin First Jurisdiction of the Church of God in Christ, paused to unite in fervent prayer as we mourn the passing of your loved one. May God grant strength, peace, and comfort to the family. Servant, rest from thy love. Employ the battle fought, the victory won. Enter now into the master's joy. Bid bestow that the Wisconsin First Jurisdiction of the Church of God in Christ bow in humble submission to the sovereign will of the Almighty God and extends his heartfelt condolences to Lady Allen and the entire Allen family and church family. It is our prayer that the strength of God be with you during your time of bereavement. Be it also resolved that a copy of this resolution is placed in the archives of the church and a copy be given to the family. Done this 14th day of November in the year of our Lord, 2020, in the city of Milwaukee, Wisconsin, Pastor John Daniels, Jurisdictional Secretary, and Bishop Cedric Daniels, Jurisdictional Prelay, General Board Members. Michigan North Central, Ecclesiastical Jurisdiction Church of God in Christ Incorporated, Bishop J. Drew Shears Jurisdictional Prelay. I have fought a good fight, finished the course, and I have kept the faith. Henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteousness judge, shall give me at that day, and not to me only, but unto all of them also love his appearing. 2 Timothy 4, 7 through 8. Bishop J. Drew Shear and the Michigan North Central Ecclesiastical Jurisdiction extends heartfelt and sincere sympathy to you as you mourn in the loss of your beloved husband, Bishop Rance Lee Allen. Take solace and the knowledge that God will strengthen you in this difficult time, for he has given us the oil of joy for mourning and the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. 
we the Michigan North Central Ecclesiastical Jurisdiction stand prayerfully with you during this time of transition. Let your heart be comforted as you remember the words of Jesus, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. John 11, 25 through 26. Love, Bishop J. Drew Shear, Jurisdiction Prelay, and the Michigan North Central Jurisdiction Family. I will offer to thee the sacrifice of thanksgiving and will call upon the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows unto the Lord now in the presence of all his people. In the courts of the Lord's house, in the midst of thee, O Jerusalem, praise ye the Lord. Psalms 116, 7 through 19. To the family of Bishop Rance Allen, in the Psalms of this chief musician, the psalmist declares that he will pay the vows for the soul being redeemed and delivered by his Savior. The question is asked in verse 12, what shall I render unto the Lord for his benefit toward me? His response, I shall take the cup of salvation. The psalm is rich in a discussion of God's view of the death of the saints, precious in the sight of the Lord and the death of saints who God will welcome into his rest at the end of this earthly journey. Because of the deliverance and the promises of God, the saint is indebted to God to pay the vows of praise and thanksgiving. Bishop Adam was a man who well knew the blessings of God's redemption, his healing, and his deliverance. He purposed in his life to repay his debt, his vow, through the beautiful melodies of music and worship. He sang the songs that we come to love, among those something about the name Jesus, miracle worker, and the sweetest name, songs that have become a part of our lives and will continue to be sung throughout the ages to come. He, along his brothers, Steve and Tom, formed the Rance Allen Group, and over the years, they have ignited our souls and spirit with their resounding renditions of gospel music. The adjectives describe him, a dismissiveness, compared to the giant shadow cast by his life, his music, and his ministry. We call him an icon of gospel music, talented, gifted, and a bigger-than-life artist. He was a passionate preacher and capable pastor who blessed many by sharing the word of God. We are also honored to call him our colleague and our friend. The city of refuge and the community of Los Angeles will remember the joyous times that he shared with us in friendship and fellowship, singing, leading the mass choir, as well as preaching to enlighten our souls. We are humbled to have known Bishop Allen and we stand with a grateful community to pay homage to him and his great family. We bid him a fond farewell, knowing that we will see him again. We say to him, rest, great soldier, and the First Lady Allen and family, we pray that God's strength and comfort will overshadow you during this time of sorrow. He will surely sustain you and allow you to soon find the place of solace in your memories of our dear brother. To the congregation of New Bethel Church of God in Christ and the churches of God in Christ, Know that we join with you in prayer and the thanksgiving that God shared him with us for this short time. The gospel community stands with you as we salute this colossal warrior. Bishop Allen, your departure places heaviness in our heart, but we say again, thank you. And we will say, amen. Yours in Christ, Bishop Noel Jones and the City of Refuge family. Cornerstone Church, Bishop Michael and Pastor Katie Pitts, Toledo, Ohio. Bishop Paul McKinstry, Worship Center Church, Toledo, Ohio. Office of the Bishop Resolution, humbly submitted Bishop Marjorie L. Holt, PhD, Bethursday Christian Center Cathedral, in Toledo, Ohio. And note that we have several that we cannot read, but please know that Evangelist Allen and the family will receive them. The city of Toledo, office of the mayor, 
the City Council of Toledo, Ohio, the Board of Lucas County Commissioners, the Community Life Kojic family, Pastor John W. McIntyre, Sr., Rock Church, Indianapolis, Indiana, Dr. Leonard S. Scott and First Lady Christine Scott, the Family Baptist Church, Toledo, Ohio, Charles H. Maccabee, Senior Pastor, Jerusalem Missionary Baptist Church, Toledo, Ohio, Reverend Dr. W.L. Perryman, Jr., Senior Pastor, the Juice FM 107.3, Toledo, Ohio, Global Word Fellowship Incorporated, Bishop Frank Bozeman, Bishop Hurtis Bozeman, Montgomery, Alabama, God's Tabernacle Church of God in Christ, Cleveland, Ohio, Pastor Elder Layman Irby II, Ladder Rain Church of God in Christ, Mansfield, Ohio, Superintendent Lewis Blevins, Jr., First Lady Sharon Blevins, Friendship Baptist Church, Toledo, Ohio, Bishop Dwayne C. Tidsdale, Pastor, Victories Believers Ministry, Saginaw, Michigan, Elder Christopher V. Pryor, Pastor, First Missionary Baptist Church, Pastor Willie Lewis and First Lady Lisa Lewis, Lounsboro, Alabama, St. Mark Missionary Baptist Church, Toledo, Ohio, Reverend C. L. Johnson, Pastor, Upper Room Tabernacle, Toledo, Ohio, Danny E. Renzi, Pastor, Kenya, East Africa Jurisdiction, Memphis, Tennessee, Bishop Jerry L. Ivory, Senior Jurisdiction Prelay, Kingdom Grace Fellowship Church, Mansfield, Ohio, Overseer Renee Collins, Senior Pastor, Turks and Caicos Islands Jurisdiction, Church of the God in Christ, Bishop Earl J. Wright, Jr., First Lady Elaine Wright, and Mother Claritha Spencer, Supervisor for Women, Oasis of Love Church, Mansfield, Ohio, Elder Raymond Cochran, Jr., Pastor, the First Baptist Church, Elwood, Kansas, Dr. Bird, co-pastor, and Dr. Anthony Bird, senior pastor, Southern Missionary Baptist Church, Toledo, Ohio, Reverend Roger D. Carson, junior pastor, United Missionary Baptist Church, Toledo, Ohio, Reverend Robert Bass, pastor, Office of the Full Gospel Baptist Church Fellowship, International State of Ohio, Bishop Dwayne C. Tisdale, and the Love Missionary Baptist Church, Fort Wayne, Indiana, Pastor Robert and Lady Maggie Bell. God bless you, family. God bless you. On behalf of the Office of the General Secretary of the Church of God in Christ Incorporated, Bishop Joel Harley Lyles, Jr., General Secretary. Bishop Rance Allen, a prolific preacher, a prince of praise, a worshiper of God, a defender of the faith, and a prince in the Lord's Church. First Lady Allen, General Secretary Lyles, on behalf of the Church of God in Christ, extends his condolences and sincere prayers to you and the Allen family in love and in memoriam of Bishop Rance L. Allen. A copy of the resolution shall be placed in the archives of the jurisdiction and a copy remitted to the family, given by my own hand, done this 12th day of November in the year of our Lord Jesus Christ, 2020, Anno Domini. Bishop Joel Harley Lyles, Jr., General Secretary, Bishop Charles Edward Blake, Sr., Chief Apostle and Presiding Bishop. God bless you. This might be a good time to uh, make known of a scholarship fund that is being created for Bishop in the name of Bishop Rance Allen by the University of Toledo Foundation. I think there's, there's a video related to it. All right, and we may can come back to that later. We would like to give all of you the opportunity to show your love and respect for Bishop Allen, but we have a schedule, and I want to have the speaker up as quickly as possible. So we're gonna trust you to help us out with that. The music industry 
is going to be represented by Stanley Jackson and Kurt Franklin. That's interesting. Is he here? <laughs> okay. All right. Then administrative assistants will be represented by Adam Green. Then the Department of Women by Mother Loretta Dwight. And I'm also told that there's another saint representing Mother McCool Lewis. I was, uh, I was 28 years old when, uh, when God loaned me the song, uh, something about the name Jesus. I was 28, wrote that song, and, uh, and was trying to, trying to figure out, First Lady Allen, who, who could, like, who, who, who could do the song had this song idea and 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 I had the idea of bringing these two generations together one with men of standard who were they were in their twenties as well young bucks and and I saw Rance Allen on on TV on on some event and the first thing I thought was is that man really does have pretty hair I never seen a fade on a man like that. And then I heard him sing and I and I did research on all of his great hits back in the seventies, First Lady, and just all of the joints that he was just killing on. I mean, every time, I mean, he was just he was a savage on every record he performed on. I mean he he uh So, so I reached out and, and got in touch with him, you know, and nervous again, I'm 28, I'm a young buck, I'm, 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 I'm trying to get the Rance Allen to be on this record, and I'm like, sir, 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 it's me, it's me, uh, uh, my, name, my name, my name, my name, my name's Kirk, and I, I and you know, and, and he's just so jolly, you could hear him on the phone, it's like, ah! My boy, my boy. And I said, listen, I have a song that I would love to put you on. Um, and I have this idea of you and these other young boys called Men of Standard want to know if I can get y'all to do it together. Because, you know, sometimes people would do their vocals in one place and send them to you. I said, no, I would love to produce you with them and be able to get like this, this performance of y'all together. I mean, if he's Rance Allen. He's, he's, he's Rance Allen, right? And so he comes to the studio and, you know, we've got, you know, juice and we got, you know, things ready for him. We got everything cleaned up because like, bro, Rance Allen coming, bro. You know, you got to be on your, you know, you got to be right. You got to be right because they come Rance. And, you know, I was expecting, you know, for there to be, you know, armor bears and security and, you know, because it's Rance Allen. Man, Rance came up in that studio by himself uh, hair blowing in the wind, you know, <laughs> you know, it was almost like slow motion, like he was standing still and his hair was blowing in the wind. And so, and, and First Lady Allen, I don't know if you know this or not, but he had never heard the song. He had never heard the song. He trusted me by me just telling him I have a song. He had never heard the song. He shows up cold to the studio and had never heard that song. And I play him the song, I jump on the piano and I just give him the idea of what I want to do and, and, and how I have him want to bob and weave. He had never heard the song before. I gave him a lyric sheet. He goes into the studio, into the booth. He goes into the booth. And mind you, I'd never worked with Mr. Rance before. And he's behind the microphone, and he starts to do this. And I said, what's wrong with him? <laughs> and he did that again. I said, do we need some water? Is he? 
is, is, is he dehydrated, you know? And he starts to move his body and he's twitching. And I'm thinking, well, he sounds incredible, but what's wrong with him? And the more he twitched, the better he sounded. So we said, we're going to let him twitch <laughs> as long as he want to twitch, because every twitch come with a better performance. And now, mind you, he was done in like 10 minutes. What you hear on the album, Rance Allen did that in 10 minutes and was like, basically, he dropped the mic. It was almost like a mic drop and said to the young boys, Oh. And what you hear is the genius of a poet, a painter. He was prolific every time he was behind the microphone. He was a surgeon. No Pro Tools, no Auto Tune. You're not having to tune his vocal. Every E he does is right on key. It's like, how does this Negro do a E on key? Every time. A savage. <sighs> we'll never see that again. We'll never see that again. And the fact that I was alive to write, record, and produce the Rand Salad. They, they had contacted me this year, First Lady, and Rance wanted me to write a song for him. I was nervous because he's Rand Salad. I had the song put together, wrote and produced the song, sent it to the label, we sent it to him, and he loved it. And we were just trying to figure out, was I going to come to Detroit, or was he going to come down, because I know he was under the weather. And, and I've got this song. I just have a song sitting, and because he's Rance Allen, nobody else can do it. Nobody else can do this song because he's Rance Allen. So, trying to figure out now what to do. Want to do something for you? I'm, 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 and you know, I'm, you know, we can, you know, easily, you know, write your check and pay for everything. Or we're trying to figure out if we're going to maybe write and produce a greatest, you know, like a tribute record and have all the royalties and money come straight to you and take care of you and. So we are trying to figure it out right now, trying to, trying to figure out something that will, yeah. And, and that everybody will do it for free. Every, every, everybody's gonna do it for free and all the money's gonna go to you. And I talked to you last week and, and you said something you didn't have to say. We gonna love on you just the way we loved on him. And, and so we'll be in talks. But you know, how do you remember him? You know, how, how, how do you remember one of the greatest ever to do it? And I think the only thing that you can say is what I heard an old mother say when I went to the performance when we, when we did the song live. And as I was walking off, I heard an old lady say, and she had to be in the late 80s. And the only way that I can remember Rance is what she said, nobody, nobody can shake their booty like Rance Allen. I would like to give, <clears throat> I would like to give honor to the leadership of the church a special honor to Lady Allen, whom we affectionately call Mom. So I bear you greetings in the name of Jesus. But let me begin by telling you about the man I call my friend, Dr. 
Bishop Rand Salad. He was a man that had character and integrity. He loved beyond what he could see and who he could see. Although he was world renowned, he remained humble. Bishop touched millions of people around the world, yet he was a husband. He was our pastor, our bishop, our textler, our teacher, our pedagogue, our disquisitioner, our rock of Gibraltar, and he never was an Achilles heel. His goal was to impact and not impress. We love Bishop Allen because he was not just an entertainer, nor because he was popular. We love him because he was a father, a mentor, a brother, an uncle, a cousin, and most of all, he was a trusted friend. When I think back at, at the essence of his life and the essence of who he was, at times he was meek as a lamb. And other times he was as courageous as a lion. When he sang, he sang like an angel. And he soared like an eagle with the wind beneath his wings. We never refer to him as chief, head, principal, boss, commander, or captain. He was our beloved, sainted leader, filled with the Holy Ghost and with power. When Bishop ministered, he took us beyond the clouds to a new atmosphere, to a stratosphere, beyond the stars and the moon. Bishop Allen reminded me of President Theodore Roosevelt, who spoke softly but carried a big stick. He reminded me of E.F. Hutton. When he sang and preached, everybody listened. He had an uncanny ability to pull people together who may have never met, and he caused them to become friends. Finally, I'm here just to let you know that Bishop Rance Allen lives in our hearts and minds. He lives through the airways and through this, his music. He lives through the churches and the words that he preached. But most of all, he lives in heaven. So never say we lost him, but his spirit is alive forevermore. One great day, we will all be caught up in the air to meet him again. And in the words of his musical lyrics, that will be good enough for me. And one final note to Steve and to Tommy and to Bishop Rance. You were an awesome melody. You were a sweet song to me. Amen. You played the world in your key. You were a circle of fists yeah. and a colorful triad. You made the world glad. Excuse me, the family is asking, do not record this service, please. Thank you. Praise God. We give honor to the Allen family and the Mendez family. We give honor to all whom honor is due. There's a scripture that comes to my mind when I think of my bishop is Proverbs 3, 5, and 7, which says, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct your path. It was 1, 3 a.m. 
day or night in the morning. It was 3 a.m. in the morning. And I received a phone call. And I could hear this voice. And it was the voice of my bishop, my pastor, my friend. He said, I'm going to tell you something, and I need you to trust what I'm saying. And as he began to tell me something, he said, when I tell you this, I want you to go back to sleep. And I said, okay. He began to tell me that my son was in an accident, along with some other near dear family members. That he was in an accident at 3 a.m. in the morning. A semi-truck had hit this car. However, nothing happened to him nor those in the car. And when he told me this, I went back to sleep because I trusted this man, my bishop, my pastor, my friend. And as he told me these things, 35 years later, I developed a trust in this man. I could hear him teaching through not just the messages that he preached through the airways, but through the songs that he sung. And through our relationship, it continued to be a trusting relationship. So I admonish you that if you trusted him, then continue to trust what he's placed in your heart. And let that carry you. Remember the words he spoke to you. Remember the joy. Remember the gladness. And let it be a trusting word unto you. And so as I stop, I want also the women of Michigan Northwest Harvest to please stand. All the women of Michigan Northwestern Harvest to please stand. So we stand together wanting you all to know that our resolutions have already been submitted and we understand time constraints. So I'm going to ask Mother Spencer. She's going to have her words and then Lady Whitehead. Thank you to Lady Ellen Allen, my friend. Her husband was my friend from the age of five until this point. We're the same age. And you know that we looked up to him even though he was a child because he preached. And when he preached, he was serious. On today, we had the resolution from the International Department of Women, but I must say, every woman in the building, if you are a member of the Church of God in Christ, would you kindly stand? If you are a member of the Church of God in Christ and you are a woman, please stand. Amen. We just wanted Mother Lewis to be able to see that we represented her on today. You may be seated. But on behalf of the Michigan and Ontario supervisors and assistant supervisors, Church of God in Christ, and there are several supervisors and assistants from Michigan and Ontario in the building on today. Mother Mary Jane Walton, chairperson. Mother Regina Rose Edwards, assistant chairperson. And I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, Write, blessed are the dead which die in the Lord. From his forth, yea, saith the Spirit, that they may rest from their labors and their works do follow them. Revelation 14 and 13. Our hearts are deeply saddened by the sudden transition of your beloved husband, Bishop Rance Allen. We serve a God of comfort and love who comforts all that mourn. Thanks be unto God who has given us Jesus Christ, who came to heal the brokenhearted that sorrows over the transitioning of your beloved husband. 
We trust and know God's love will never fail you. He has promised you everlasting consolation and hope through his grace. Michigan Ontario supervisors and assistant supervisors, pause with the family. The New Bethel Bountiful Blessings Church of God in Christ and the Northwest Harvest Ecclesiastical Jurisdiction to celebrate the memory of Bishop Rance Allen. We encourage you to remember all of the times of caring and sharing, the wisdom that he imparted, sometimes through song and other times through the preach word. His voice will never be silenced down here on this earth. Please know that we will continue to lift you and the entire family up in prayer, continue to lean on the everlasting arms of the Lord, humbly submitted. The Michigan and Ontario supervisors and assistants, our chairperson, Mother Mary Jane Walton, Mother Regina Rose Edwards, yours truly, and Mother Renee Murray, graphic secretary. We give respect to Bishop Daniels, general board member, to all the great men and women in the audience today. We come to be a blessing to Mother Allen to let her know her sisters are praying for her. Um, I represent the Michigan Canadian Council of Bishops Wives Circle. We have already submitted our letter of comfort. We want to, you to know we come to honor a great great man. This man whose body is presented here today, the casket is too small, the crypt would be too small, the grave would be too small to hold the influence that this great man has presented in this lifetime and we honor you today. Bless you Mother Allen, we represent from Molly Whitehead and as well as Lady uh, Pearl Hill of Bishop's Wives Circle. I've known Rance Allen since he was six. A couple of months ago, I turned 78. So sometimes I do forget my mic. I'm going to ask all of you to um, be as brief as you can. We have a musical selection by Elder Porter. And after him, after him, uh, Jerry, Bishop Jerry Gibbons, Bishop Zachary Williams, they have you for two minutes, but I'm going to ask you to take one. Apostle Mel Williams, uh, they have you uh, down for, it's called priestly expressions. And then Bishop Q.S. Caldwell and Pastor Homer Jameson, please. Uh, follow that suggestion. Say amen as they come. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. First, I give honor to God to add my life to this church, to all of the ministers. The man of God is going to get a word and to mother Alan and to the Allen family I said to myself I said I can't do this and then I thought about mama and I said I'm gonna do this I got to and uh, I want to say two things and I'm gonna go on to the song but I just said uh, Bishop Rance Allen called me uh, first I was toiling with something in my life and I was going to quit singing after about 20 years and Bishop call itself, I guess, fussing with me. And anybody that know how Bishop is, he speaks so soft, but he was still fussing. And he raised his eyebrow and said, no, no, you, 
you can't quit singing. You've got too much to do. He said, when the enemy comes in like a flood, you know, he said, God will raise a standard up against you. He said, tell that enemy to flee. We've got too much to do. So the second time, he called me. He said, Paul, I might need you to sing a song on my live record. And I stopped him right there and said, Bishop, I don't mean no harm, but you don't need nobody to sing with you. But if you just want me to sing, we ain't even got to talk about it. I'm there. give you a choice to see the kind of choice you make. If we go in this direction, they will not make the cemetery. We have a lot of other persons on the program. And the one thing that you have to do is resist the temptation to feature yourself. Excuse me. Uh, that's my only concern. And we're not going to be unfair to the second assistant presiding bishop. Now somebody might say, well, I can't control it. I'm so happy I can't control it. There's a scripture that says the spirit of the prophet is subject to the prophet. I mean, whatever's in you, you can turn it on or off. I hate to disappoint you. Look at your program. You're not quite, you're just a little over half through. Now, musicians, I presided over the National Musical for 20 years. So I want to encourage you try to just be a little restraining and let us get through the program and hear the feature of this day. Thank you. To the bereaved family, devoted friends, to our chief apostle, presiding bishop, Charles Edward Blake and his absent, to our intern, second assistant, presiding bishop, Cedric Daniels, to our efficient Bishop Whitehead, to my own jurisdictional prelate, Bishop Don William Shelby. June 8th, 1953, 8.30 p.m., 
the worst tornado in the history of America touched down in the Beecher District of Flint, Michigan, killing 116 people, injuring 844, causing $19 million worth of damage, still on the, mile, on the ground for 18.9 miles with winds at 300 miles per hour that were moving boxcars up the railroad tracks. A day afterwards, the media came in to try to find a witness to this event, and they discovered an old Caucasian lady, and they said, can you tell us what happened prior to? And she said, yes. She said, moments before the storm hit, there was an ominous cloud in the sky. Minutes later, she said, there was an eerie silence, as if a giant vacuum cleaner had sucked all the oxygen out of the air. That's how some people are. They just like that tornado. When they walk in the room, when they get on the conference call, when they step on the playing field, they suck all the oxygen out of the air. But Bishop Rance Allen was just the opposite of that. He was big enough, in the words of the late Bishop Chanton David Owen, to let somebody else be big. He never made the story about himself. For 35 years, beginning in 1984, him and his wife, one of his deacons, would make that 100-mile commute to Flint to conduct the annual Christmas revival at Prayer Garden, Church of God in Christ, without fail. And one day I was talking to him, if I go to my seat, I said, Bishop Allen, how is it that you can love on people that hate on you? And he said, Dr. G. And he took me to Romans 12 and 9, where Paul said, let love be without dissimulation. Yes, a boy that was the evil, cleaver that was the good, be kindly affection one to another with brotherly love, and honor prefer one another, not slowful in business, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord, rejoicing in hope, yes, distributing to the necessity of saints, giving them hospitality, blessed them with persecute you, blessing, curse not, rejoicing in them and do rejoice, weep with them in the weak, mind not the high thing, but condensed to men of the state, be not wise in your own conceit, recompense to no man evil for evil, provide things honest in the sight of all men. And it will be possible as much as lie then you live peace with all men did beloved avenge not yourself but rather give place on the wrath of the written Venus is mine I will be placed at the Lord therefore if I enemy hunger feed him if he thirsts give him drink him so doing thou shalt heap coals of fire upon his head Bishop Brand Salon that's it give honor to God to the pulpit uh, to Mother Allen I bring you greetings from the wonderful city of Dallas, Texas, where uh, the Apostle Herman L. Murray is the pastor of the church. And he could not come today, but he sent me to uh, tell you that he's praying for you. You just one call away, whatever you need, just give him a call. We love Rance Allen. He would come to our convocation and our homecoming. And my God, we would just have a great time in the Lord. And we're going to miss him. We love him dearly, but we're going to hold you up in prayer. We're going to lift your name up, and if you need anything, don't hesitate to call us. God bless. Praise the Lord, saints. Uh, to give honor to God and to our Lord Jesus Christ and to all those who serve in the kingdom, uh, to the clergy. Uh, in the house today to all the leadership of the church of god in christ we certainly salute you all about 30 years ago um, this man of god came to eastern north carolina and uh, we haven't been the same since because what he brought to eastern north carolina was something so dynamic people shouted for joy souls got saved lives got turned around and changed well the past over these years um, not only came to know Bishop Rance Allen as uh, just a great man, but a great man of God. I want to thank God for him because he taught us something that most people don't have. He taught us how to love. He taught us how to care. It didn't matter where you were in the landscape of life, in a social place of life, Bishop Rance loved you where you were. And he showed us by great example about stability. After loving the same woman almost 50 years, preaching for 66 years, um, going uh, down through the years of being faithful in evangelism, uh, this man of God has shown us what it's like to serve the Lord with fear and trembling.
And all this mind you without reproach and without scandal. And most of the time we don't give God thanks for that. People nowadays are changing wives like they change shoes. They are speaking tongues but won't speak to you. This man of God loved the Lord. I can really say, you know, that at the meeting Bishop Rants, I, I, was, I was thankful to God because, you know, you can reach a place that your spirit is grieved by a lot of things because a lot of people know church, but they don't know Jesus. And this man of God was a man that loved the Lord. You knew there was two things about Bishop Rance if you knew him, that he loved himself some Jesus and he loved himself some, we call it in Eastern North Carolina, Lady Bishop Allen. He loved those two things. And I just want to thank God for the privilege that I could call him friend. I can call him friend because we talked about things, you know, that, uh, that because being him being the celebrity that he was, he, he didn't have a whole lot of people he could talk to about a lot of things. Um, I want to say to uh, Brother Kirk, you know, he told me about that session. He was just really wondering, wondering where you're going to let him write a lyric in that song so he could have a piece of it. I also want to say to Chris Bird, the song that Paul just got through singing, he, he wondered about that one too. Why, you know, Chris always writing these songs. You need to give him part of them songs that you're writing. We thank God for him, and we thank God for um, the life that he lived, the legacy of Bishop Rance Allen. We greet him, and we give God thanks for him. We call him in Eastern North Carolina, we call him the benediction, because all of us in here know they have a Rance Allen story, that after he stands up, the only thing you need to say is amen. God bless you. Respects to Bishop Blake. Respects to Bishop Daniels, my friend, and Bishop Whitehead, to Mother Allen, and to the children, especially to my cousin, Pastor Natalie Caldwell Kirkpatrick, to you God's people. I want to say this, I was privileged to be a part of the group chat that Mother Allen created so that we could see the recovery of Bishop Allen after his surgery. Men Bishop talked some years ago that upon my transitioning, he was to do my eulogy. He said he would be honored, but he left before me, my friend and brother. When I received the message early Saturday morning, I asked the Lord why. But only thing I could think about because of the pandemic that we're in, we can't visit our loved ones in the hospital like we want to. So unfortunate. But after receiving a picture Tuesday of the week of his transitioning, I looked at my brother sitting in the bed, smiling, drinking his water or Sprite, saying he's ready to come home. I called Mother Allen. I say, well, when you get out, y'all come to Georgia to the house and we'll quarantine together because you all are going to get tired of each other. We laughed and we had fun about that. But I said, Lord, it was so unfortunate for my brother to leave us so soon. And this is the only thing I could think of was a little boy that was born to a couple. It was their first child. Grandmothers on both sides loved this little boy called Junior. One mother came to stay at the house because the two had careers. And the grandmother was spoiling Junior. And every time he cried, she would pick him up. They got a room for him with the crib. So he got to stop sleeping with us or grandmother. They told her, don't pick him up when he cry because we don't want him spoiled. Well, after they conversed with her, the next night he cried for a while 
it stopped. The wife said, your mother has disobeyed our orders. He said, my mother told me because of him stop crying, she did not pick him up, and my mother don't lie. And so the next night she said, we're going to catch her in the act. The next night he cried, it stopped. They went to the room. They didn't find mother nor the baby. Went in Junior's room. Mother was laying in the crib with him. They say, what's going on? She said, you told me not to pick him up, but you didn't tell me that I can get in the crib with him. <laughs> so even though we were restricted from going to visit Bishop, but Jesus didn't need no permission from officials to go in the bed and to dry all of the tears from Bishop's eyes. And I'm here today to thank God. And everybody help me out with just doing this look at someone and say, Bishop Rance Allen made it in. Let's give God praise for that. Church, say amen. Reverence to our Christ, to our presiding officer, to all of the bishops of the Church of God in Christ, to Lady Ellen and the Allen family. God bless you. The Bible declares through the psalmist, precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. We come here not to mourn, but to celebrate the life of Bishop Rance Lee Allen. What a man. What a man, what a mighty good man. I met Rance over 35 years ago. For 35 years, Rance made the trip up I-75, down I-75 North to the city of Detroit to do revival at the Jameson Temple Missionary Baptist Church. Yes, a Baptist preacher and a Kojic preacher had a deep relationship that was birthed by the Holy Spirit. And I praise God for this man of God. And if he was here today, he would say, y'all ought to praise God. Don't weep for me. For 35 years, Rance brought the gospel of Jesus Christ to our church. He brought joy. He brought deliverance to the people of God. And I say to you all, don't weep for him. I'm reminded of Enoch and God in Genesis 5 and 24. Enoch walked with God. They started off like Rance did early in the morning of his life. They walked, it rained, but they kept walking. Storm clouds grew over, but they kept walking. It got hard sometimes, but they kept on walking. Soon the sun was about to go down. And Ranch said, God, we are a long ways from my home. Uh, I believe I'll turn around and go back. And God said, no, Ranch, you're closer to my house than we are to yours. So just a few days ago, early in the morning, Rance walked in, hallelujah, through the gates of glory to be with the Lord. Thank you. And now, that group that all of us are looking forward to meeting the family. I understand he has a lot of family. So, Sister Allen, I'm assuming they all know who they are, and, and uh, this is your time to come and speak about your brother or cousin, whatever. Let's give them a wonderful, wonderful. Uh, 
This is one of the lead singers in the group. Where's your other brother? Okay. That's him. All right. Let's give them a hand as they come. I'd like to say this on behalf of my brother. I thank God for each and every one of you that is here today. It's been a long uh, and joyous ride with my brother. We've been singing for over 49 years. When we started, it was just myself playing bass, Tom playing drums, and, and uh, Pastor Allen playing the guitar or the piano, depending on what songs we were singing. But he was one that always wanted to be current, so he said, you know what, we need to change things up a little bit. We're going to bring in some young guys so that we would still be current with the music. He brought in uh, Chris Bird to be the music director, Terry Faison on guitar, Gordon Henry on the bass, and Courtney Dwight on the piano. And from that point on, all those years, these young guys stayed with stay with us all because he was the type of person that he was easy to get along with and they knew that what we were doing was something bigger than all of us he had a voice you all know that he had a voice Amen. he had a voice he had a voice that would he could hit those high tenors and sound as melodic as a songbird not only that he could reach hit those deep baritones that he could actually sound like a lion growling in tune. And if you don't believe it, I want you to listen to that song that they were playing on that tape. Hear my voice. I want you, if you haven't listened to it, listen to the entire song. And I'm telling you, he sounds like a lion singing in tune with his, with his growl. And I like to say there was two things that he always said. He said, there's two times to praise God. Praise him when you feel like it and praise him when you don't feel like it. And the other thing that, that, um, that he said, whatever, whatever you do, don't lose your praise. So in the spirit of Rance Allen, somebody just put your hands together and give God some praise up in this house for Rance Lee Allen! Praise the Lord, everybody. Um, I'm, I'm the, I guess, the honorary member of the Rand Silent Group. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm the younger brother, one of the younger brothers. <clears throat> I I'm, was on the program to do the humor part, one of the humors, so I'll do my little thing about Pastor Allen. <laughs> uh, right now, we, we had uh, our father, uh, Rand, and Tom and him affectionately called him Dad Man. He was a, uh, a Puerto Rican, feisty, and uh, he had an axe. He could do multiple things with that axe. He was surgical with that axe. So my brother Tom and Rance devised a plan that they're going to play a prank on my mother. My grandmother sis had a, a full stuffed animal of a dog. They're going to play a prank on my mother that the dog is attacking Pastor Allen, Rance. So they, they put their plan in motion, and, and they open up the door. Tom opened up the door, and mama, mama, the dog got Rance. Rance, you know, got the dog on top of him. Rawr, rawr, rawr. So my mother come out there, oh, my God. Oh, my God, the dog got Rance. So then she called my father, Manuel, Manuel, the dog got Rance. He came outside, wait a minute, honey, I go get the ax. The prank was over. <laughs> Ray, he didn't want nothing to do with that axe. So they, they, you, some of you might not know that my brother Rance had a very uh, comical side. He was, he was absolutely funny. Those that know him, if you've ever been in his presence, he, he's a funny guy. And he was an advocate boxer, you know. He could move swiftly. His jab was, was, was one of the quickest that, that I've ever seen. And uh, he would always say, you know, I'm, I'm big, but I can move with this 300, none of your business pounds. <laughs> yeah. So my, I, I used to go with my brothers when they were young, and I'm, and I'm going to try to move this along because there's a lot. Uh, but I, I traveled with my brothers um, when they were younger, when I was younger. And uh, every place we would go, I've never seen my brothers 
leave and went somewhere where I couldn't go. I mean, the life that they lived was exemplary, okay? And they didn't want them to sing in some churches because they thought they were playing, you know, their songs were too rock and rollish. And I asked my brother one time, I said, why don't they want y'all to sing? He said, little brother, let me tell you this. He said, one day a sea was raging and the disciples were on the boat. And he said, Jesus came back walking on the water. And when the disciples seen him, they were afraid. And he said, the reason for their fear was that they had never seen Jesus come in this way. And he said, he said there, they can't see Jesus in us yet. So what they don't understand, they become fearful of. So I'm, I'm glad today that not only the church, but the world put it all together and recognized that behind the guitar, there was grace. That behind the funk, there was faith. That behind the bass, there was blessings. See, anything you wanted to know about my brother, his message was in the music. See, he, he, he taught us to put our hand in the hand of the man who calmed the rage and sea. Put our hand in the hand of the man from Galilee. He told us ain't no need of crying when it's raining. He said if they set out the lights in your little house, don't you let them set out the sunshine in your heart. And, and, and he had questions that he asked himself. He said, what is this that makes me feel rich when I don't have a dime? He said, whatever it is, it just won't let me. It won't let me hold my peace. And they asked him about Jesus, and, 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 and he said, I, I can't explain the power that I feel when I hear his name, but there's something about the name of Jesus. And they asked him his occupation, passed the island, and said, I'm a preacher man. And then he told him his M.O. He said, I don't wear a black suit all of the time. I got to get next to you, so I read red, blue, green, and lime. I'm the preacher man. I got my Bible in the hand. I'm spreading the word all over the land and helping my brother when I can. I'm the preacher man. He let us know that he appreciated us. He wrote a love letter to Jesus and said, I belong to you. He said, whenever we were feeling like we were alone, he said, like a good neighbor, Jesus is there. And last but not least, he told us his traveling itinerary. He said, heaven what a day it's going to be. Hooray, hooray. <laughs> he said, I, when, when I get to heaven, I'm going to be singing and dancing all day. He told us his travel itinerary. He said, I'm going to tell you this. I've never been to Paris, neither in the spring or the fall. He said, but if I can just make it to heaven, that will be good enough for me. He said, because heaven is the place that I want to be. And I want to leave this with you, First Lady, and the rest of y'all out there. May you be bountifully, bountifully blessed. Um, I just want to say that uh, I'm going to miss my brother. He, he, was, he was everything to me. Uh, if it wouldn't have been for the path he chosen, I don't know if I would have been taking the path I took. And he uh, he always gave me the respect. Hey, big bro, come on, man. Yeah. <laughs> you know he's so. I for one will miss that camaraderie we, we had, but. Uh, if I know him, he'd be saying, hey, man, you, gonna, you got to push on, bro, yeah. you know. And that's what I'm planning on doing. And I appreciate everybody coming out to honor my brother. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Hello, everyone. For, zo for those of you who don't know me, my name is Annie. My brother Rans had six sisters, and I am sister number three. 
what was it what was it like growing up with Rance Allen and I'm going to be quick here it was exciting to say the least never a dull moment there are so many fine precious memories that I could speak on but that would take all day now you may re hear me refer to him as Rance a lot no disrespect because growing up, we simply knew him only as Rance. We all looked up to him in one way or another. He was the pillar of strength that we needed in our family. Whether it be something that he would say that would stick in our heads or our hearts, maybe something that he would do to encourage us or give us the strength or maybe just a simple joke that he would tell, because y'all know he was a jokester. <laughs> he was. <laughs> oh, Rance. <laughs> maybe a joke that would, he would tell just to put a smile on our face just when we needed it the most, just when we needed a little uplifting. Whatever the case, he will be truly missed. There will definitely be a void now there would be a, a loss, a hole, something that at the moment is extremely hard for all of us family to even fathom. But as I always say, I know a God who can do anything but fail. <laughs> God has seen our family through many trials and tribulations, and he will see us through this most difficult time. I'm very sure of that. Rants. We're all, we were all so godly proud of all of your accomplishments, your music, your singing, your preaching, but most importantly, your never-ending, everlasting, enduring love for God. Something that no one could ever or ever did take from you until the day that you took your last breath. We love you, brother, and we will see you on the other side. Amen. And just before uh, the family uh, exits, all of the nieces, nephews, our sons, our daughters, please, please stand up. Show, show your uncle, show your uncle some love. This is this is the rest of our a beautiful extended family because our mothers and fathers fell in love one day and they had these beautiful children. Thank you. Hey Amen. we gotta, Pastor Allen, you gotta know that he was the fashion icon too, y'all. We gotta put that out there. Nobody could rock a vest like Pastor Allen. Hey Amen. that stage presence. When he got the stage presence, when he reared you in, he throw that leg up there like that. I'm telling you what that's for. That's so you can see the sock combo with the gators. I see Mother Allen is coming to the front. She has already uh, changed some of the program. She had three people for laughter. We'll leave them on, okay? But she's going to just do one. Do all three? Oh, he's already down here. So do the other two. Oh, that's it. Okay. All right, everybody, get ready to stand on your feet. Everything that hath breath, stand on your feet. I think our women are getting a little tired of always being underappreciated. And the truth of it is, we are nothing without them. Um, this will take 10 seconds. I was in the hospital for two weeks with the virus. They called my wife and said, he's not going to make it. Let him die here rather than bring the disease home. My wife said, if he's going to die, let him die at home and give me my husband. That was in March 26, and I still feel blessed. Now, this man we celebrate, this woman helped make him. 
And I want in the name of not just her, but every female anywhere, I want us to show respect and appreciation for the part of our wives in our life. I'm fitting to present to you the woman behind the giant. Let me see those hands tear up this place. Tear it up, tear it up. Tear it up, I don't know, no, 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 more than that, more than that. Put those hands together. And everybody say out of your heart, God bless Mother Allen. Amen. God bless you, Bishop Daniels, and to all of the clergy, to all the women of God. Amen. You may be seated. Praise God. Amen. I am so thankful to all of you who took out of your busy schedules to come and be a part of our celebration of this great man that's laying before me. Pray for me for a second, okay? Amen. I... Uh, did not want this day to go out and me not say anything about the great man that God gave me. Um, so if you bear with me a few minutes, I'll try to be short. Is that all right? And I think uh, Bishop Whitehead is a little partial to my speaking. He always has nothing but good things to say. Um, I wanted you so bad to know somewhat from what I have to say about the man that the Lord gave me for almost 50 years. We've actually been together for 50 years because we met in, on July the 18th, 1970, and then we were married December the 1st, the same year. So I asked God to give me something to say. Um, Today, I'd like to talk about the orchestration of God. You don't have to be quiet on me. <laughs> you knew him as a singer, a boy preacher, an entertainer, the musician, the man that could play the guitar from behind the, his back. The minister, the elder, the associate pastor, the pastor, the doctor, the bishop, and the senior pastor. In the preaching arena, he was called the master closer. This man who once held a five octave range in singing, and in his latter years of preaching would modulate six to seven times with little or no effort at all. He would holler until chains were broken and he made his own self happy. And so his colleagues that would often come to experience the artistry of this master anointed vessel paint strokes on a canvas that could never be duplicated. Help me, Holy Ghost. In some places, they called him the benediction. Because after the God in him was finished, there was no need for a following act. But let me speak to you about the man that I knew for 50 years. That we honor today, my husband. And just for a very few minutes, let, I'm going to peek into the orchestration of God. In 1969, I rededicated my life to the Lord and at the age of 15, I told the Lord that someday I wanted to get married and that I wanted a husband that loves you, Lord. A husband that loved his mother. And I knew that if he loved me, he would love as, as he loved his mother, that he would undoubtedly be the Ephesians 5, 25 man. And as the scripture declares, it said, as Christ loves the church, and he gave himself for it. And the score begins. I'm talking about the orchestration of God. He worked 
a full-time job in the secular world, and shortly after, I got a part-time job. In 1973, he decided he wanted to work in the ministry full-time. So after we talked about it, I told him I was willing to work full-time just to make sure that we had full benefits, and God honored our request. Now we have my priest. In 1985, the late Bishop Gilbert Earl Patterson came to Toledo, Ohio, and he founded a new Bethel Bountiful Blessings Deliverance Church and left Rance as the pastor and me as the first lady. He worked for years building the ministry and nurturing who he called his babies, but never really wanting me to do much because he always wanted me to be protected. Bishop Jack White and he often expressed that he could handle it if the people hurt him. But he would not tolerate them hurting me. So I knew him as my protector. As time went on and my prayer life had to intensify because the bigger he got in God and the more God granted him favor, the greater attack was upon his life. The ordinary Rance Allen, as you knew him, was no more. And so he, so we covered him. And as I covered him in the natural, I also had to cover him in the spirit. And as I grew in God, he realized that who he had been protecting as a wife was now equipped to help him fulfill his assignment, not just at home, but in the ministry. And so the one single note became a blended harmony. And the score continues. My king, and that he was. He was great all over the world, Tom, not just in the kingdom, but he was a representative of who God was in the earth. To me, <laughs> I was never made ashamed by the life he lived. And not just in the world, but at home. Reggie, he never ate at the dining room or the kitchen table unless he just wanted to. I'm talking about my king. Or unless it was a holiday. Because my king, I said my king, he was always served. And all of my children know you don't serve your daddy on a paper plate. And you don't give him a paper cup. When I fix his plate, I put it on a tray. And I take it to him and set it down before him. Nobody eats at my house till the priest and the king eat. I know y'all don't like that kind of teaching nowadays. His plate was always fixed and brought to him. Mm -hmm. He never had to cook his own food. But if I was gone too long, he would find himself digging in the refrigerator, finding anything he could eat. And he would put it together Throw an egg in it, fill up as some sweet peas, and I don't know what in the world <laughs> made him think the sweet peas went with everything. But he loved some sweet peas. But here I always wanted him to feel worthy of being loved because he loved me. I wanted him to have his heart's desire, and he always wanted the same for me. And I was determined that no one would ever honor him more than I would. Because he was my king. I'm talking about the orchestration of life. Rance was never an argumentative person. As the Bible says, he never let the sun go down on his wrath. In 49 years and a few months of marriage, we never slept apart, with the exception of him traveling. 
He was a peaceful man, a masterpiece that contained the true character of God. A true example of what the scripture said in Matthew 5 and 9. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the sons of God. And the score continues. My love. He was passionate and compassionate. Trustworthy and loyal. Honest and dependable. I'm talking about my love. He believed in what he called the three C's in holding a marriage together. Communication, consideration, brother Butch, and compromise. Uh-huh. And this is a syncopated rhythm that kept this song on beat. I believe Brother Derek Stocks know what I'm talking about. From the weak down beats to the strong up beats, instrumental preludes to the active changes, the love of my life transposed the keys of our lives to make the composition flow. And this change made life comfortable for the both of us. I don't believe you're praying with me today. And I know I'm not the preacher of the hour. But syncopation brings excitement to music by play with our expectations from where the beat should occur. When I, I even thought it was said, and I know it was said, that we would never make it. Because I was too young. 16, and he was too old, 22. They said he robbed the cradle. <laughs> this musical composition should have never made the charts. Right. But with my father's consent and the hand of God, as the song say, and the beat goes on. <laughs> invite you into the symphony where David arranges this masterpiece proclaiming in Psalms 150 150 and one said praise ye the Lord praise God in his sanctuary praise him in the firmament of his power praise him for his mighty acts praise him according to his excellent greatness Praise him with the sound of the trumpet. Praise him with the psaltery and the harp. Praise him with the timbrel and the dance. Praise him with the string instrument and the organs. Praise him upon the high sounding cymbal. Praise him upon the high sounding cymbal. Let everything that has breath Praise the Lord. Praise. Praise ye the Lord. So as the Lord said to me the other day, do you think because he's gone that I stopped the song? He said, I am that I am. And the beat goes on. You don't have a lot of bishops here. Many bishops chose not to come. Not because they didn't want to come, but because of the condition. It's been difficult getting the kind of honor that bishops deserve. One of the greatest bishops we had couldn't have a funeral representing who he was, Bishop P.A. Brooks. But this man, this man, with all of the risk and all of the things that people warned him about, 
is here. Let me tell you who he is. He is the second assistant presiding bishop in the Church of God in Christ consisting of six million people. Church of God in Christ, you just can't go look in a mirror and make yourself a bishop. You have to first of all be recommended by a bishop. And then before you can step there, you have to go before a general board. But before you go before the general board, you have to go before the presiding bishop's office. You have to pass them. Then after you pass them, then you stand before two and three thousand people. And if one of them find fault, you can't be bishop. This man, one of the greatest builders you've ever seen, you need to go you need to go to Milwaukee. And they need to name that city Daniels, Milwaukee. If you go through that city, you'll see schools, ministries, nursing ministries. He's one of the most productive, and his sister is one of the most productive women we have in our church. Excuse me. He's here. In spite of all of the reasons others are not here. And I want you now to stand to your feet. Every person in this room. And by your actions, I want you to say, others could not come, but you came. Others were afraid to come, but you came. And I want you right now to show him the greatest honor that you can. Put those hands together and honor the second assistant presiding bishop. Yeah. All right. There's going to be a song, and then he will come. And the person singing the song is Natalie Caldwell Kirkpatrick. Our Father, our God, we are grateful and we are thankful for your loving kindness and your tender mercy. We praise you for this moment, for this hour. We thank you, dear Lord, for your strength that you give. We thank you, dear Heavenly Father, that you are not only the rewarder of life, but the rewarder of life everlasting. We praise you for this, your servant. Thank you for the life that he has lived and those that he has impacted. We praise you, dear Heavenly Father, for his precious wife and this wonderful family. We thank you for his church family and this jurisdiction and those ecumenical individuals that have come from across the globe to celebrate your servant, your psalmist. So bless your people as only you can do. And we'll be careful to give you all the glory, the honor, and praise. In the wonderful and matchless name of Jesus, we pray. Thank God. Amen. As you take your seat, I give great honor and respect to our esteemed leader of the Church of God in Christ, the Honorable Bishop Charles Blake. I stand by his permission today, and he would that you would know Mother Allen and to the Allen family, as he has spoken to you individually and collectively how much he loves and Lady Blake loves the Allen family. The Church of God in Christ, the Board of Bishops, the various members of our denomination, we salute one of our giants. We praise God for the Allen family. To all of the bishops that are present, all of the leaders, the pastors, the bishop of this congregation, and to Pastor Whitehead who did a phenomenal job. Let's praise God for him. And all those that have been engaged, we greet you today. And I'm clean, keenly aware that in order for us to stay within our time frame, that the final remains of our beloved bishop must be uh, 
at the cemetery in about 50 minutes. And I understand that it is a 40 to 45 minute drive. So I want to thank you and I only want to take three Kojic minutes. And uh, from that three Kojic minutes, I will then take my seat. I want to suggest and say to you that in the word of the Lord, we often find strength, peace, and hope. Today is a day that I have mixed emotions because it is my mother's birthday. She would be between 95 and 100 years old. You know they don't like for you to tell their age. But she's resting in the arms of Jesus. I want to say for those of you who may think that uh, Bishop Rance Allen was the one who did the benediction, if you were just listening a few moments ago to Mother Allen, there has to be two benedictions in the life of the Allen family. In the word of the Lord, John the Revelator reminds us, even in a moment of exile, he says to us very plainly, succinctly, and clearly about a place that he says that there is no more weeping, no more dying, no more pain, no more suffering that the former things are passed away and that all things have become new. He speaks of a city. He speaks of a new Jerusalem. He speaks of a place where God himself will wipe all tears from one's eyes. I want to suggest to you that uh, for a moment if I were to label my two-minute discourse now, that I would simply label this particular conversation that God's promotion is never a punishment. God's promotion is never a punishment. Throughout the telescope of time, we have heard of individuals that have been promoted. Their strives and their accomplishments, they receive meritous awards. They receive recognition for the things that they have done as a result of which they are promoted. When individuals have gone through their course, their course and their area of concentration, the greatest thing that they look forward to is walking across the stage at graduation because they have been promoted. Well, I want to suggest to you that Rance Allen at the age of five made up his mind, I'll start preaching about this promotion. And at the age of 12, like Jesus, begins proclaiming this truth. And for many years, he declares through a spoken word and through music about a promotion that he would ultimately receive. And in my last 60 seconds, I want to say to you that there was a little boy. And with this little boy, he had grown up and had become ready to take his exam. He had been matriculating for a long time. And now it was time for his promotion. But he had to take the test. And when he had taken the test, they had said, you must pass the test. And they locked the door. And they were in the room. And while in the room, everyone else had finished the test. And no one was left but the janitor. And it went hours and hours. And finally, the man finished the test. And when he finished the test, the janitor said, why did it take you so long? He said, all that I've gone through, it was not about what I had to go through, but it was about the promotion of finishing the test. Rance Allen said, I've never been to Paris in the spring or the fall. I've never been to India to see the Taj Mahal. I've never been to Switzerland. No, 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 on a winter games play. 
Well, I've got five seconds. He said, but if I make it to heaven, that will be good enough for me. Well, I've come to tell you, Rance, you made it. I said, hold it right where you are. Bishop, did you want to say anything more to them or let it? You made it. <laughs> All right. All right. Oh! I know what I'm supposed to say right now. You're talking about what I'm supposed to say to the jurisdiction in the church, right? All right. Uh-huh. But I just want to tell the people, you made it. Wow.